Right then, there's the big Muller post, folks. There. I'll be seeing that later. I could be coming up that way later. Or near, not far away from it anyway, because later on when I come up, I've just come from that way. Over the other side, beyond that tree there, there's the bit on a comb. I'll be going up there on the way back, down there, and down the steep bank back into Bicknoller to get the bus later. I've got plenty to eat. I've bought an extra little fruit juice. I find the little fruit juices that I usually give to infants, they're quite handy. They fit in the pockets of the rucksack. Um, I've got two bottles, bottles of water, you know, ordinary standard size for, for one. I've got another fruit juice, I've got banana, I've got raisin bars, oat bars, yoghurt bars, cheese, tomatoes, um, crisps, cheeselets, chocolate, sweets, oranges. I always come out prepared because there's nothing worse than being hungry. And I eat on the move. I, I, I sometimes, if I get, go to Holford, if I do end up on the green, I often sit there and I'll have a cheap, have my cheese and tomato there. Let's week them down there. And I've done that. And there's another little valley just over by a tree there. You go over, there's another little valley I explored this year. Now for now, I'm skirting the Beacon Hill. I'm following this track round. Because when I get round a bit, I should be able to see what's called Smith's Cut. Now you can go across the top there as well, uh, but that takes you above above Smith's Coombe. Do you know what I mean? But the idea today is to go down it, then walk round past Wordsworth's house or Foxton, and then back up Holford one way. I might do Lady's Edge. It, uh, I'm trying not to let the time dominate me. Um, I started to not really worry too much about it and, and only looked at the clock now and again because it was, make, it was winding me up, to be quite honest. So I'm doing a bit of guessing. I've sort of worked out roughly that I can just about do it but it will probably mean a later bus and a later train. That's the only thing. It will, it will, mean, it will mean that. There's an old tree out of his day, isn't he? It's lovely, that coom. It's lush. Not a soul in sight. I did see a couple of people a minute ago. Unless I, these sheep, from the distance it could have been these sheep that look like people. Yeah, my grandson was 18 today, is 18 today, uh, he is 18 today, and 18 years have gone by just like that, just like that they've gone, the little people have all grown up, we haven't got any little people, well, I haven't, like grandchildren anymore, they're all teenagers, and they're all teenagers apart from one who's, who will be 26 this year. And all my children, this is the one time, the one year, that all my children are in their 40s. All of them. Georgia is 40. Duncan's will be 43. Jolene's 44. Zara is 49. She'll be 50 next year. It just seems unbelievably un impossible for me next year to have a 50 year old child. I just can't believe it. I can't believe my kids are all in their 40s either. But one, one, there's just one time in every decade that they share their 20s, they share their teens, they share their, um, hello, hello little sheepies. Hello, darling. I bet you remember me from before. Yeah. Yeah, in the 20s, I'll all be. So, uh...
we're all moving on. I'm 70. I share the Jubilee year with the Queen. I'm 70. I was born just before, days before her father died in 1952. I mean, she became monarch, but she wasn't crowned for another year. They have to go through all the whole ceremony, you know. But she was, she was really Queen Elizabeth then. Right as soon as he died. I think he died on the 6th of February, 1952. See anyone here? I think I can just see two people, but it could be a tree. I saw some deer earlier. Right over there, the other side. I usually only always spot them. They sort of say hi to me. They know, they know my voice. They were, the, the deer are watching you long before you were in it, before you spot them. Yeah. I remember being sort of almost trapped by cows there once. They were going along there, they were coming along here, and I had to get to that post. I mean, in the end, I think I, I went that way. I, I went past them. They're really big, that herd. I think I went down there somewhere. Anyway, we're carrying out. And that is another way of going. They all lead up down to Holford. I'm trying to be careful with the camera. I'm awfully sorry if it's swaying, if it's jumpy, if it's making your eyes go all weird. The heather's not out properly yet. It's just starting. It's just, it's just very slow at the moment, isn't it? And the gorse, look, looks dead. Now, in a couple of months' time, you know, later in the summer, this place will be full of colour. Absolutely full of colour, this will be. I think I'll walk this way, it looks a bit softer. Anyway, so I'm just showing you a bit of the terrain that I'm walking. I don't know if you'll see it because the last two lots of videos I've done, I've saved them but I haven't shared them yet because of the swaying. And I ramble on too much, I think. All right, over and out. Over and out for now. Right, folks, up oh, there's a trick point. I'll just take a picture of it. He gets up there. That's a trick point. There's a bloke going up to it. He's got a dog. Let's just do some scenes here while we're waiting. See those trees there? That's um, Smith's Coombe. I'm going to go down past those trees. Then I'll be following the contours further down around till I come to some more trees right over there. A quick way is just to zoom around on the main track here. That's a quick way. I'm um, just seeing if I can see any deer as well. I'll just get around this corner a bit. There's somebody going to the trick point. Typical, isn't it? I've had the place to myself and there's somebody going up there now. Can't do any video on this people, obviously. You might walk straight past. It looks like he is. Over there, you've got the big hill over at um, Minehead. North Hill, I think it's called. I've climbed that and I climbed all along the back of it to Porlock along the coastal path. Quite a, quite a strenuous walk. Right, what I'm going to do now is go up to the trick point. Please walk straight past. I can't come this close to it and not do it, can I? The trick point is on top of Beacon Hill. Okay. I don't know, this could be jumpy, this could be swayy. I'm awfully sorry, everyone. I'm trying, I'll try and hold the camera still. It's really difficult with bumpy ground 
and you're trying to keep your balance and you're trying to hold an awkward camera. It's not a massive camera, but it's it moves with my body. I'm sorry. With the Sony's, it did it a bit, but nothing like this one. This is a still camera. You keep still when you use it. We'll go up there and we can take some shots from the from the top there over the other side. We can't come all this way and not come up to the trick point. Oh, I feel so great. I know I'm breathless and I know I'm old, getting older. But God, it's I'm so lucky to better do this at 70. And I'm hoping I can do it at 80, mate. I hope I can. 60 seems a long time ago now. But sometimes I feel fitter now than I did when I was 40. It's because I was working. Stress of work, running a home, a family. God, it was hard. It was hard. Yeah, it was very difficult. I had no support, really. I did, I did have the odd friends, but those were the days where I used to go in pubs. So, most people were drunk that I knew. All well, our entertainment revolved around drink. You know, karaoke, bands, beer festivals. Do you know what I mean? So it was for a lot of a lot of my generation. Right, camera still. I'm going to go the other side, and you can see me. This is Sheila. Hi, everyone. There we got down there. There's something called Washford or something. I think this might be that place. Then you've got Watch It over there. Every little place. It's a beautiful, lovely little seaside, very quiet little village by the sea. Full of history, full of folklore. Yeah, they have a festival there. Georgia went to it last year. I could hear the music from here. Well, I was over there actually when I first spotted it and I've climbed right in the far, far distance there's something called Dunkery Beacon right up there and I've climbed that several times that's the very high peak around here but I've walked all the other side of there I just spent several camping trips over that way I've missed doing that now I, uh, the thing is Covid came anyway I wouldn't have been able to do it anyway but now I'm holding back again because of the crisis with the standard of living and um, the crisis with what was what with um, with petrol going up and um, what's amazing though the energy companies are actually making a massive profit you know they really are but um, go this way. They're making that profit at the same time that everyone's had their energy bills doubled and it's so bad that the government are having to give us handouts. I got 150 quid, everyone got 150 quid the other week. Well if you lived in band A and you were a pensioner or you were on benefits, I'm not sure, or low income. And then in autumn, no, next month, July, certain people on certain benefits, they're going to be given 600 and something pound, split into two halves. Be 
because the people are starving and everyone's not even doesn't even know how they're gonna cope in the winter so when October comes he's giving everyone 400 quid for their heating now what they should be doing is really dealing with these big companies they shouldn't be allowed to charge what they're doing what's happening the government are bailing them out do you know what I mean? The companies should be giving the money to the with people for us. I mean, I'm get I get warm home warm home discount from my electric company, and I get the winter fuel allowance from the government because I'm a pensioner. It's something we were entitled to because we worked and we'd survived. Do you know what I mean? I don't know if you can hear this and I don't know if it's jumpy but I'm just showing just talking about a few worldly events I don't know how it came about I go off at a tangent as some people who follow me know right, right over there on the coast is Kill Beach beautiful where all the fossils are I haven't been there now for about three years when I had my van you know I made the most of it I really did. I knew I was on borrowed time with my van. Saying goodbye to over there for now at Minehead. I've got I hope this is the right way. Um, yeah, we go straight down over here now, folks. This takes us down what's called Smith's Coombe. I'm going to go down Smith's Coombe now. There's tracks leading everywhere. I don't think I, I might have, I might have gone down there. I might not have, it might be something I've got to do another time, go down that way. I think I probably have done it. I think I probably have done it. This says, Smith's Coombe, which is where I'm going, and Bicknoller Post, which is up that way. So let me take a picture over and out, folks. 